Uh, time to spend some time with our best friends, folks. And as uh, Jackie and I were talking about earlier today, we talked a lot about animals uh, here this morning. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, after the animal that you love, uh, as time on this earth is done, uh, there's something that you can do to remember your animal, unlike any other place here in the Des Moines area, Jackie. Yeah, and it's known as Loving Rest. And we're very excited to have Jim Johnson with Loving Rest Pet Funeral Home joining us this morning. Thank you so much for being here, sir. They're too kind. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you all for such a unique service uh, that really means so much to so many people, especially when you're talking about a member of the family. And we can be talking about a member of the family. It could be anything from uh, a snake or a lizard all the way up to a horse. And uh, you've experienced every one of those, haven't you? We did a lizard last night. Did you really? And there's just so little to a lizard. It was only a less than a half pound lizard. but. And we also did a horse last night. Now, when you say you did a lizard and you did a horse, what are you speaking of? That means that we have a cremator big enough to put a whole horse in. And we cremated one last night. It means that on the front lip of a warm cremator, we put this little plastic bag with a lizard in it. And we're very careful not to overdo. And so we could return that lizard to the people who cared about it. Really? Now, even someone with, that brought a lizard in, that means something special to them when you can give the remains back to them, doesn't it? It does. And we picked that up at Iowa State University, though there are local clinics that do exotics. Um, we just, sadly, any emergency scenario, which is Iowa Veterinary Specialties on 63rd and right. Creston, uh, Iowa people. State University, referral places, they see pets in tougher situations. So we see more pets from those scenarios. Right, I understand. Now we were showing a couple images uh, just a moment ago that I hope we can bring up again because it really truly shows you the inside of your facility and how you're different from everyone else. So you have a, a four chamber cremation unit. Is that what we're looking at right here? Yes. Okay. Um, very expensive by the way, but also very efficient. They are smaller chambers. Um, our other cremators all have larger chambers. They're based on human size. This is especially built for the pet world. It is. Uh, j yeah, just um, the chamber's not real deep, not real tall, not real wide. It gives us efficiency, um, fuel usage. This is, I hate to ever talk about afterlife care in terms of it being a business, but efficiency still matters no I'm matter sure what you do. And efficiency allowing us to do a perfect job for the pet owner. Mm -hmm expeditiously and so that's the f that's that's the four chamber can I lead into something we were having our open house on May 11th well we've had to change that um, in fact I think at the end maybe I jumped the gun but uh, our parking has all been taken over by dump trucks full of dirt we just won't have any parking in May so we're changing it to the second Saturday Okay. Does, that, does that show the dirt off yeah, pretty that, well? That shows your dirt, yeah. It shows yeah. your piles of dirt in where your parking lot used to be. Yes, and so... So it's not going to be very convenient for people to get to your place and park. No, especially if it was raining. This is transmits into mud, actually. Right. A little moisture at all, so... Okay. Um, so when are we, are we rescheduling at this time? We're going to wait and see what the parking nope. lot situation is. Second Saturday in September. Oh, September. So you're going to give yourself plenty of time then. Okay. Yeah, they're not done bringing dirt. Um, and so therefore big trucks are running over a driveway, which I can't afford to rock um, until they're, the big trucks are done. Okay. So by September, we'll be ready for that. Okay. So what's the whole idea here? Are you just building up the parking lot to get it more level or what's the deal? <laughs> yes, but I also have a second business I'm developing out there. Um, we're bidding, building a wedding reception hall mm -hmm. for a lot of people. All of those people will need to park. So long term, we're just inching our way down the road towards that and you have to take advantage of things when they come up and the dirt came up. There it is. Well, when good. you do something, you want to do it right. And that's how you are in all your uh, uh, things that you go after, especially when it comes to aftercare uh, with animals. Why is it such a passion? Can you remind everybody about that? Uh, if we have something we love in our life, why is it so important to then take care of it once it's passed away? We had our own pets. I got married to a dog uh, and a wife, excuse me. Sorry, Dottie Lou, uh, <laughs> but uh, she came complete with the cutest little cockapoo in the world. We had pets at home uh, when I was growing up. Some, and when 
when our dog died, we had nothing to do with it. It was pouring rain. We were at the Liza Minnelli concert at the Civic Center, and we both got chills at the same time. We knew our dog was very ill, but it was also supposed to recover. I turned to my wife in the middle of the Liza Minnelli concert and said, Sammy just passed. And we got home and he had, and there was nowhere, nowhere was I aware of to take her. So I took her to a human cemetery in the pouring rain to the back side of the cemetery and covered her up with some brush and cried all the way home. And 20 years later, this idea got proposed to me and I was in 100%. Every day I get hugs, I get crying phone calls, people just sob. Now when you first did this, when you, when you first opened up your place, was it mainly burials of animals or were you cremating from the, from the first, uh, first we day? We cremated from the start. From the start. And uh, the, Why was that important? Um, because that was the industry. Okay. Um, even then, uh, let's say we did 20 private cremations a month, we did one or two burials. And then as our name got out, we averaged about one burial per week at, at the most, but we had also gotten up to where we were doing 50 cremations a week. Okay. It's just what veterinarians relate to and refer to people, mm -hmm. and the cost difference is tremendous. Okay. And so we're mostly a cremation business. There you go. Let's talk about the scatter garden. What is that? Well, the scatter garden, and you, I think, I believe you have a picture of yes, it. Yes, we do. But we pick, there it is, there it is. We pick up privates, pets for private cremation, but for different reasons, not everybody wants a private cremation, can afford a cremation. We don't ever know the reasons, but when we pick up pets at veterinarian clinics, there are always groups or communals, whatever you choose to call them, we cremate them together and then we powder the cremains and spread them on the cemetery so everything stays at Loving Rest. It does. And, uh, oh, we're running the commercial here. Um, is that live on TV? Yeah, yes, that's live. But, you're watching but it, 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 it gives you, uh, it still gives you that. There's my mother. That's what I wanted to point oh, out. Oh, your mom. Yeah, I wanted to point that out. And, um, but anyway, back to the communal. So we take a small handful. There, there she, she is. is. Hey, Mom. <laughs> She's leaving Iowa at the end of May. Okay. She's going to live up by my sister in Minneapolis. What a lovely 92-year-old woman. And she sponsored the Scatter Garden when the cemetery was started. She did. She paid for it. Wow. And the headstone um, has our old family dog's name on it. Okay. Doofers Diggin'its, it's called. So we scatter a representative, a small handful and then we scatter the rest in the cemetery grounds so people can always be comfortable, even with their communal, that it went to a good place that will always be a resting place for pets. So they, people know it's gonna be a calm place. Yes. That's awesome yes. that you do that. I try to outthink people's needs, mm -hmm. and so far I've done fairly well at that, I think. And when did you start your business? In 1997. Okay. It'll be 22 years this September, that I went to a uh, pet cemetery school. There is such a there thing. There is such a thing? Where's that at? Um, well, it, it, it rotates between convention cities, wherever the International Association of Pet Cemeteries has their convention. They do this four-day school. It was a good school, but I don't think I learned much. More importantly, I met a mentor who owned a cemetery in Chicago and a crematory, and Hinsdale, is is everyone's dream. They are so big, they are so conscientious. Uh, they they just set the bar, and Bill Remkes, who owns it, has become a very good friend. I spent so much time at his house. They put a nameplate at the base of the door of the room I slept in. I got I got taught properly, mm -hmm. and with no exceptions to ethics or morality. It was Bill's way or the highway, and I mean, I'm proud of him, and he's proud of me, and That's we right. remain good friends. As you mentioned, you were just traveling to Iowa City not too long ago, and you have a fleet of vehicles that can go out and pick up animals and do it in the proper way yes. uh, to make sure everything is taken care of just right. I don't know if my daughter supplied a map, and maybe okay, she did. Okay, we can define what the territory is that you have. Oh, we saw it in that well, commercial yeah. where you saw mm -hmm. everywhere that you go. There we go. Um, 
We go north as far as Eldora regularly. We service the Eldora Veterinary. We go south to Mount Air. We service the Hilltop Veterinarian Clinic. We go east to Grinnell and Sully. Okay. And we go west only as far as Earlham. That being said, with the horse business, we go anywhere. All right. We charge by the miles. I've got a dedicated driver, Charlie Dewey. We are in Illinois and Missouri and Minnesota. People trust us. And oh, the, you know, what a compliment. But people have heard of us. We don't advertise this. People have heard of us and they want us and they get on our website. There's a couple of our vehicles. We've actually got five um, that we use to pick up pets. We'll pick up. On a given okay. day, three or four are on the road. There you go. And Let's talk right. about how to get in how touch get, with yep. you. How to get what? How to get in touch with you. Well, we have a website. We have a Facebook page. Um, most people just ask their veterinarians, and the veterinarian tells them to call us. Um, so our phone number is not hard to find, I don't believe. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't lovingrest.com will get and you right where you go. Lovingrest.com, there's our phone number. Perfect. Boy, somebody does a nice job here. <laughs> well, you do a nice job, too. You do an incredible job for one of the most important things of all, a member of your family uh, being your pet. Thank you so much for everything oh. you do. Good to see you. Thank you for joining well, us thank today. You thank you for, for having me. All right.